Hello, welcome to a bit of an experiment. We are going to attempt to create a simple platform game in 30 minutes or less. So the timer starts now. Here we go. So I'm going to make a directory for my uh, game or a folder if, you, if you're in Windows. And I'm going to call this uh, platform 30 min. And there we go. I got my directory where it's going to hold my files. I'm going to try and keep things pretty simple. Usually my projects end up having four or five files. We're going to have just two. One text file and one module. All right, I'll open up my Thawney editor. And we'll create a new file. And I'll save this as... And although I'm only going to have one uh, file uh for the code, I'm going to go ahead and call it main as I typically do with my Pygame projects. So I'll just call this main. All right, we're going to do this in three steps. Uh, first step is we are going to simply make a Pygame uh, window application. So let's get going. First, we're going to have some constants. Our constants are going to be at the top of the screen. So I'll import Pygame, and then we'll get some constants. Now, there's a two different ways to make uh, comments in Python. You can use these triple quotes that make it kind of like a string that the computer will ignore. Or you can use the pound sign. I like to make the comments with the triple quotes when I want it to be very visible. But if it's just like a little bitty note to myself, then I usually use the um, pound sign. All right, white is going to be the color with RGB values, 255, 255, 255. Remember, things in parentheses are called tuples, T-U-P-L-E, and they're very similar to lists, in, but they cannot be edited after they are made. You'd have to just completely make a new one. All right, so I've got white, uh, green, blue. Let's add a black as well, just in case. And there we go. And we're going to have some frame rate of 60 as our target frame rate. I'm not going to be going for frame rate independent movement in this. Uh, that's something you could certainly incorporate, but I won't be doing that. And height of 600. Okay, so let's write a class for our application. And I will simply call this game. All right, we're going to just make a group for our sprites so that we can use the nice functionality of the Pygame sprite group. I'm going to make a clock that will handle my game loop timing so that we have a kind of a close to steady frame rate. And I'll store a copy of my display into self.screen. And the way you create a display in Pygame is with the set mode function. I always thought it was kind of weird. It doesn't sound like you're making a display, but it is in the display module. And it takes a tuple for the width and height, so I gave it our constants width and heights. Notice the double parentheses because uh, the, it only takes one uh, argument, a tuple, describing the width and height. And we need to make a game loop that will continue as long as we're playing, so we'll use that Boolean. And I'm going to write several functions here, uh, or, or methods, since they're in a class, I guess. First, update game. And all update game is going to do is update the sprites. Now, there might be additional things later on as you take this kind of framework and build a more complex game. Next, I'm going to up, write update the screen. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill the screen with white. Now, later on, we're going to change this to a background image. So I'll make a little note for myself to do that. All right, and next I will draw all the sprites. I don't want to draw the sprites before I fill the screen with white. Otherwise, uh, they'll leave uh, their residual images as they move around. And I want to fill it first so I don't erase them. So self.sprites.draw will call the draw function uh, on every single sprite. So basically it will uh, blit the sprite uh, based on the image 
it has to have a, the sprite has to have a self dot image, and it will do it in the position of uh, it's rect. It's so it has to have a self dot rect, and that's what sprites dot draw does. It do, draws every one of my sprites. And very important, if you're ever wondering why your display is not looking correct, you may have forgotten to say pygame.display.flip, and that actually updates the screen that you see on your monitor. All right, now we have to have an, uh, a game loop, um, an event loop, sorry. So uh, update events, so there we go. The update events is simply going to loop through every event that's occurred and look and see if someone has tried to end the game. And of course, we could have some other events as well in there, some keyboard or mice events. So I'm going to loop through every event in pygame.event.get. pygame.event.get is a function that returns a list of every event that's occurred since the last time the game was updated. All right, and we're just going to look and see if the if the type every event has a type variable if it is equal to the constant from pygame called quit so that could be anything but usually we associate it with pressing the x in the upper corner to, to quit it and if that is the case then we're just going to set playing to false okay all right now finally i we can make the game loop and the game loop will loop while we are playing while self.playing self.clock.tick fps will make sure that we are hitting our target we're trying to hit our target uh, frame rate per second and we'll slow down or speed up as necessary and then every frame so we got to think about each one of these things is called every frame i will update all the events i will update the game and I will update the screen. All right, this is uh, a good stage to test our code to make sure that we've got uh, our game set up the way we want. So I'll just make a simple main function. Notice I'm outside of the class, so it's a function that will init pygame, create an instance of our game class, and call the game loop method when it gets back to line 43 here, we know that we're ready to quit Pygame because the game loop is exited. And then if this module is run, I don't know, maybe you'd want to be able to import it later. So we don't. I'm not going to make it to where it just automatically runs. It has to be the main module that's run. I call the main function. Let's check it out. Hopefully we don't have too many little typos. Uh, game attribute has no attribute sprites. So, oh, I said self.sprite equals pygame. That's right, that group. All right, one typo so far. Game attribute has, okay. Why did I type sprite everywhere? There it is. Okay, so um, we didn't set the title. You can uh, check the documentation to see how to do that, but I'm just going to leave it like this, and I'm going to call this step one done all right next step is we're going to make one level for this game so let's go ahead and do that it makes sense to just make one level since we're not actually going to have time to make any like objectives all right so i'm going to say save as and we'll be saving in this uh same directory a text file and i'll just call this level one so level one dot text and i went ahead and pre-made this. I hope that's not considered cheating in my 30-minute goal, but uh, I went ahead and just made this, and I made it to where, and you can see that the first X is in column one. According to my Thawney editor, this number up here at the top of the screen, it's really small. So you can see that I am 32, if I put it right there, I'm 32 wide, and I went down to row 24. So I'm 32 by 24 on my level. All right. Now we need to go ahead and make a class that will handle this. And this class, we'll go back to our, we'll just put, again, I'm just putting everything in main today just to keep it simple so I'm not hopping back and forth between files. I just wanted a different text file. It's the only other file I got. So class map, and we'll make an init, which will just take in a level. 
and that level is actually going to be a string that is the name of the level file you would like to load. So uh, what I'm going to do is call these tiles. We're going to be making this as a tile-based game. So we're going to have to add a few more constants. Okay, so I've got uh, self.tiles as a list. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this a list of rows of strings. So each row in my level text file will be a string. And each letter in that string will be a column in a tile. So our tiles will be uh, each row is one tile tall and each letter is one tile wide. Well, let's go ahead and throw in a couple of those uh, constants. Okay, so um, we're going to actually change our constants too, just a little bit. So first I'm going to make a constant for the number of rows, and we made our files going to have 24 rows, and the number of columns. Now we certainly could have our rows and columns uh, dependent on the level size, and so that it kind of can grow or shrink based on the level setup, but we'll just make it a constant. And I'm going to make each tile size 25 pixels. Okay, and then I'm going to just go ahead and compute the width as well. Now, this is still going to work out to be, I believe, the same value. But that way, if I change my rows and columns amount, I want my, my width to be, uh, if I end up changing this number, I want my width to automatically grow with it. So that's just, I think, good habits for making um, your game scalable. By scalable, I mean easily changed and enlarged and made bigger and bigger, you know, without having to go back and change a bunch of numbers. Okay, so I think that is all the constants that we need right now to make our map. So we'll go back down. You know, I if you haven't done this, by the way, I highly recommend you have outline on. It really makes it easy to just jump around your, um, it's under view. So I can click right back to map. And um, and whenever I'm making a game, I oftentimes can't think of all the constants I need till I get to a situation. And then I'm saying, oh, I need another constant. All right, so here's how we're going to read our text file. So I'm not sure how much experience you have reading text files in Python, but it's really simple. Um, you say with open, and then you give it the text file you want to open, which is level. And you can put uh, an R for reading it or W for writing. So you can open a file that's brand new to write to, or you can open a file to just read. And we'll be just reading our file. So we're going to open level uh, as in a reading format as F. So the, the width as, what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that it closes our file when we're done. If if you don't do that, you have to manually close your file. So this with open as F is a nice little trick that they put in Python. And we're simply just going to loop through every line in the file. So we're, um, for line in F, we'll just take one line at a time. And one line of our file is exactly what I want. Remember, we want our tiles to list to be a a list where each element in the list is a single row. So I'll say self.tiles.append because that's how you add to a list in Python. And I'm going to say line. Well, there is one issue with this because that line in our text file actually includes not just all these X's, but it has uh, the Unicode character at the end for the return. That's how the computer knows to go to a new line. Well, I don't want like my level having a blank space after each one. So we are going to use the dot strip, which just removes any trailing or leading white space in a line. So they've got a built in way to handle that. If you're curious what effect that has, and it doesn't always make it a noticeable effect, just take that off and see. All right, um, now we're going, after we do that, we're just going to make an image file. So we could leave our map as a collection of uh, sprites. So, for example, uh, you know, like in Mario, he can hit uh, some blocks and they and they burst. Well, I'm going to make it to where we can't change the level. Uh, again, you can go back and do that. And since we're not changing the level, uh, there's no reason why I can't just paint the level on the screen as we speak. So I'm going to, instead of having to render each and every block 
uh, in my map every single frame. We're just going to draw a picture and be done with it. Okay, so let's do the make image. So to make our image, first, well, we need an image. So I'll call it self.image. And images are surfaces in Pygame. And a surface, just like your screen, has to take in one argument for a tuple. Well, I want my background image to be the same site, uh, size of, of, of our screen. So we'll say width and height. And I'm going to go ahead and fill it with white. You can fill it with whatever color you like. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a block that we can paint. So my block will also be a surface. And the surface size for a single block is tile size by tile size. And let's we'll see here. We'll, what color should we make our block? We'll, hmm, how about blue? Okay. All right. Now, all I need to do is loop through my tiles list and blit each one of those, blit a block every single location where I need one. Okay, so let's explain this code. Um, we are going to loop through uh, every single row of tiles. So remember, our list has uh, 20, I guess, 24 different um, strings in it. So I'm going to loop through, I could say, you know, for row in self.tiles and that would loop through them, but I actually want to know what tile row I'm on. And as we move down, we're changing Y values. So by saying for Y in range length self.tiles, Y will be um, keeping track of which row I'm on, which will help me know exactly where to put it on the screen. Now, not only do I need to loop through all the rows, but on each row, I need to loop through every character. Well, in Python, uh, strings are just like lists. They're just lists of characters. So I'll say, as I move to the right on this row of strings, I'm actually moving in an X direction. So I'll call this for X in range, lin self.tiles. And I want to put bracket Y because we're looping through the Yth row, if you will, of the... Um, tiles. Okay, so now X and Y is my tile position of where I need to put um, my blocks. Well, we don't put a block everywhere, so I'll say if self.tiles, now this is a little tricky, you might be tempted to say X, Y, but it's, remember, the first value is the row that we're on, so bracket Y, then bracket X. If that is equal to, and we use capital X's to mean our blocks, so I'll say that, then that means I need to blot an image there, blit an image there. So self.image, the blit command, you call it on a surface. So my image is my surface, dot blit. Now you have to tell it, what am I blitting? Where am I blitting it? What am I blitting? I'm blitting a copy of the block. And where will I blit it? At X, Y. But remember, those are tiles, so I need to say tile size so that it actually becomes a pixel location, right? So if I take the tile location and multiply it by tile size, it will now be the pixel location that I need. Okay, um, so we should be ready to check this out. But in order to check it out, we need to go up here to our update screen and change this line. Remember we made that note about it. So we're gonna say self.screen.blit get that down and we're going to be blitting self.map.image always in the upper left hand corner of the screen zero zero well we need a self.map i don't think we've made one of those yet so let's go up to our init and make sure that we have one of those so now that we have a map class we can say map and the name of our level is level1.text. Okay. I th hopefully we don't have too many errors and we see a nice picture. Well, we got one. If self.tiles y bracket x oh, equals equals x. 
All right, there's our world. It looks a lot like the level text here. So, all right, good deal. I'm happy about that. On to step three. We are now ready to create our sprites. Now, we're going to be using subclasses to cut down our work and make this game expandable. For example, we want our characters to be able to, to move around the screen responding to gravity and the walls. And our enemies that we add will probably want to do the same as well. So we're, gonna, we're not going to just do a bunch of work and then have to copy and paste it. We're going to do some work and then scale from there using subclassing. So the first class we're going to make is called Collide Sprite. And this kind of setup um, I originally found in a, uh, or I will say I borrowed from the uh, Code the Classics series. They have a nice way of handling their setup for their sprite classes that interact with walls. And so you can check that series out. It is super cool from the people at the Raspberry Pi. So definitely look into Code the Classics. All right. Well, anyway, first of all, my collide sprite will be a sprite. So I'm going to subclass that. Got my email up for some reason. Close that. All right. So let's write our init. All right. So, um, and again, you know, I've spend some time playing with it, what exactly I want, but I've decided that I want my Collide Sprite class to be very basic, but I do want it to have a reference to a game, a rectangle, and a starting position. First, we call the super classes in it. This is so important. If you don't do this, then you then your Collide Sprite will not be what I put right here. This is the class I'm subclassing. If I want it to actually be a sprite, I need to call in it. I'll keep a reference to a rectangle. Remember, we need a self.rect to be a sprite so that it knows where to be blit its image. And I'm going to just set the mid-bottom. Mid-bottom, remember the rectangle uh, has lots of different location properties, left, right, um, center, top. Uh, mid-bottom is the XY tuple of the middle of the bottom edge. And so I'll be using that to position our sprite. We'll keep a reference to the game. We'll add ourselves to the sprites group that we made in our game application. So I have to go through self.game and I'll add myself, my collide sprite. And lastly, this is really just a typing thing. I don't want to say self.game.map for some I just figured I'd want to say just self.map. So I'm really just making an alias here for the self.game.map, but I felt like it was something I wanted to do. All right. Now, the only method that we that our collide sprite is going to have is a move method. And the move method is going to have two Per, uh, parameters that are, have default value. So our default value is that the change in your X position and the change in your Y, which I call DX and DY, is zero. And that means that if I want to move up and down, I just send it a DY. I don't have to send it a DX because it'll be zero. And there's four different conditions. We're moving left, we're moving right, we're moving up, or we're moving down. And watch how we handle that. If DX is greater than zero then I'm moving to the right. But I don't want to just say um, self.rec.x plus equals dx. You know, you might be tempted to do this. Well, the problem with that is that that's not checking that I can actually move that way. And I want to check if I've hit uh, another sprite at all times. I want to make sure that I can actually move in that direction, and I want to do it throughout my journey. You know, if I have a wall here, I don't want my sprite to move a big chunk of movement and all of a sudden be in the middle of it. I want it to stop as soon as it hits it. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to move one pixel at a time. 
And I do that by saying for i in range dx. So remember, for i in range means that i will be 0 all the way up to this number. And what that means is the code I'm about to put in this loop will repeat exactly dx times. So if there's no nothing blocking you, there's no obstacle, I will move exactly dx amount of pixels. So we just move one pixel at a time. And then we're going to say if self.map.collide wall, self.rect. Now I'm moving to the right. So if that happens, then go back one pixel because we just went one pixel too far and return true so that we can handle the logic of what happens. All right, so what is collide wall? Well, no, it doesn't come from um, Pygame. We need to write it ourselves. So we're, we're going to have to go back to our map class and add one more method. The collide wall is simply going to calculate whether or not we're colliding with it. Now, if our blocks and walls and obstacles are sprites, we could do a sprite collide and loop through all that, but I think it'll be faster if we just interact directly with our uh, map. So here's how we do it. We're going to take in a position, and I'm going to convert the position's x coordinate to a tile position. So we multiply by tile size to get a pixel position, so we need to divide by tile size. Notice that I use integer division. That means if the position was, say, pixel number 7, well, 7 divided by my tile size of 25 would be a decimal. I don't want that. I want it to be an integer for my tile number. And so 7 divided by 25 with integer division would be 0. So this way it will be an exact tile value. And then I simply return whether self.tiles at that, remember the y is the row, so it goes first, bracket x, does that equal an x? That's what we want to know. All right, so that's all we needed for that. All right, so simply what I'm going to do is basically copy and paste this and make some changes. So that is moving to the right. Let's, what about moving to the left? Well, if we're moving to the left, when we're subtracting an x, but if we collide with the wall, we have to go back by adding it. But dx is a negative number. I want to move that many times just in a negative direction. So I use the absolute value function to change it. So uh, if it's a negative 5, we'll still move 5 pixels to the left, but you, you know, we, we need to make that uh, a positive number for the range function. Otherwise, it won't work. Okay, uh, let's do it again, this time for the y value. If it's dy, then our y is moving down, but if we collide with the wall, we've got to subtract 1. And we'll do that again. Um, oh, you know what, though? We used mid-right when moving right. Let's check mid-left. And I actually found that if you want to start making these collisions work really well, you actually want to use like an or statement and check like the top left, mid-left, and bottom left so that, you know, as your game gets more and more pixel collision precise. As we're falling, though, we're going to use uh, mid-bottom. And again, you may want to use um, the bottom left and the bottom right, you know, something like that. Okay, uh, so that's good. I got checking mid left when I go left, checking mid bottom when I go to the when I'm going down, and we'll do one more. Now, if you want to make it to where you can jump up through platforms like you can in many platforming games, this code would have to be changed. Uh, it's actually a little bit more coding to do and and stuff like that, so I'll leave it off of this tutorial. And we're going to say uh, minus equals if we are negative and add equals and I will check the mid top. All right, last thing to do now is for us to actually make our player. And we're not going to make an enemy, but your enemy would also be a subclass of that. So remember our collide sprite Oh, we have to make a... Actually, we're going to make one more subclass of Clyde Sprite. We're going to call it Gravity Sprite. So we're not quite ready to make our player. Gravity Sprite will 
be a collide sprite subclass. And this is what you would subclass with your players and your enemies. Unless, of course, your, I don't know, maybe your, your enemy can fly, and then I guess he wouldn't want to do gravity sprite. All right, we're going to write an init. I'll call the super constructor with the game, the rect, and the position. And I'm just going to add a couple new properties in this subclass, one called dx and dy. So those are the dx and dy that belong to this object that we can use to pass to our move function. I'm going to also add a property called onGround, which is false. Now in our update, we're going to start our update by assuming that we are not on the ground. And then we will change that based on the logic of what the move tells us. I'm also going to set my dy to be uh, the minimum of a constant we'll need to make called max fall and my current dy plus gravity. So we want, as we fall, we want to speed up so that we get that jumping kind of physics. So up at the top, we'll make gravity. And what value did I want to use for gravity? I think one. You can also use decimals, but you'll have to int it when you actually call the move function. Uh, I'll make a speed variable for my player of four as well, and we'll make the jump value 12. So we need all that eventually. And one more constant, max fall is 15. So we're just, we don't want to, we want to have a terminal velocity of 15 uh, pixels. So um, that's what I do with minimum. So whatever's smaller, you know, so if my, if my dy plus gravity gets bigger than the max fall rate, then dy will just be my max fall rate. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to move. But remember, our move function returns true or false based on whether or not you hit something. Oh, actually, does it return false? Let's go, my collide sprite move, I return true when I hit something, but no, let's, if we never hit anything and we get all the way down here, let's just return false because we never return true. There we go. Of course, not returning anything behaves in Python like returning false, so it probably wouldn't matter. Okay, so if self.move, just in my dy direction, so my D, I'm not moving, we're going to move up and down and then we'll move left and right one at a time. So if my move returns true, that means I've hit something. So that's one of two possibilities. Either I was falling and I hit the ground, I'll comment falling, which means that on ground needs to be true. Or I hit the ceiling. Either way, I want to make my dy zero so I don't keep falling. So that this just has a property that allows us to know we're on the ground, which will allow us to jump. I don't want to jump if I'm hitting the ceiling. I want to jump only if I'm hitting the ground. Next, we need to go ahead and move in the other direction now. So I'll say self.move. This time I'll pass it dx equals self.dx. When you're supplying a value for a default parameter an, or an optional parameter because it's optional because it had a, a value assigned to it as zero you need to say the parameter name and then give it an equals what you want so a little bit different than some programming languages well if that happens then self.dx will be zero as well because we can't we don't want to keep moving in that direction all right now we'll make our player sprite so class player is a gravity sprite And I'm going to make, uh, we'll take in a game reference to our game and a starting position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first make an image. And we'll just make them tile size by tile size. And then I will fill the image. Uh, I think I'll be, we'll be green. Okay. Um, and I need a rect, so I can say self.image.getRect. Remember, all surfaces have a getRect method that tells you a rectangle that surrounds it. Now, you may have noticed I haven't called my super constructor, so I'll do that now. 
but I needed to do just a little bit of calculations first. So I'll send it my self.rect and I'll send it my position. Okay. So now let's call the update for our player. Now remember, all sprites have to have an update. We already have an update in Gravity Sprite. So we have an update. We just need to improve it a little bit. So first, I'm going to assume that my DX and my uh, DY are both zero. And then what I'll do is I'll get the state of the key. So pygame.key.getPressed. And if keys, keys is a list of Boolean values, pygame.kleft, that's the left arrow key. If that key is pressed, then self.dx equals negative speed. If keys pygame.keyWrite, then self.dx equals positive speed, changing it from zero. And if keys dot up and self dot on ground, very important, right? And self dot on ground, then self dot dy will equal to negative our jump power because up is negative. Finally, we do need to call the update from our super class from the gravity sprite. So I'll say super dot update. So at that point, we've done all the setup for us to run this code. All right, let's go ahead and add our player to our game. So I'll go to my init and throw that puppy in there. And I think I just want to make him start in the bottom left hand corner. So I'll say self.player equals player self. And I'll put them five tiles in from the left. And I'll put them one tile up from the bottom. So 23 times tile size. All right. So remember the player class takes a needs a reference to the game. So I'm in the game class. So I send it my self game and then it needs a position. All right, so we're a little over time, but we're close, but hopefully we have something workable. Oh, well, hmm, not quite able to Oh, and there's the issue. So if you go to Collide Sprite, and this is why we shouldn't always copy and paste, boys and girls. I forgot to change these values here when I did all that copy and pasting. So this seems to be for I in range dy, and this needs to be for I in range the absolute value of dy. So please make sure that you fix that. And we'll try again. Well, it looks like I can jump a little bit. All right, so one more typo. When in the player class on update, uh, we said self.dx equals zero and self.dy equals zero. We just want to say self.dx equals zero because if we're not pressing a key, we want to automatically stop. But I don't want to automatically stop when I'm falling or jumping. So that was a mistake. We should not do that. Then I th think with any luck, this will be the rest of our rest of our issues. So there is, um, when you play around it, you will notice that you can kind of go into a platform, kind of. But, uh, that's because we're only checking the bottom, not like, we're only checking mid-left for collisions, not like bottom-left. So I'll let you add that as an exercise to use and statements. But it's pretty close to what we need right now. Now, I'm not sure that my gravity is enough to, my jump power is enough to, to do the game. So we'll have to up that in the constant so you can jump a little bit higher. But um, we went a little over, but it was a good experiment. So I will see you next time.